Hey folks, uh, in this video I'm going to be explaining to you how it is that I want you to teach the class for the full example Adjust Fire Grid Mission. Um, basically I'm just going to lay it out step by step what it is that you want to say um, to the cadets and your team and, and how you're going to explain to them each individual piece. What I want you to get out of this is uh, how it is that they are to understand each individual piece. Um, I want you to get out of this uh, sort of a clear understanding of, how, of where I want you to pause and, and uh, where I want you to then to explain the calculations um, as far as figuring out the adjust fire grid mission and uh, where I want you to pause and explain to them uh, certain important pieces so they have a full understanding of how all the mathematics and whatnot fit into the picture of uh, giving that transmission to the fire direction center. Um, so I'll just start from the beginning here. Um, First, explain to them that they need to give, initially, the observer ID and the warning order, the warno. So you would say to them, uh, Aries 57, this is Bone Crusher 16, adjust fire over. This is Aries 57, adjust fire out. Pause there. Tell them that the Aries 57 is the fire direction center, and Bone Crusher 16 is yourself, the observer. And that is the observer ID, that is the observer identifying themselves to the fire direction center. Next is the sort of warning order, that adjust fire uh, part. And that is basically you are giving to the fire direction center what it is uh, that you request of them. You request of them an adjust fire mission. Um, explain to them also that with a grid mission, um, well, normally with, with the rest of the missions, like Polar, Shift from Known Point, you would state after the uh, initial part, Adjust Fire in this case, that it is that type of mission. Um, with the grid mission, you don't state it. You just say, Adjust Fire Over. You, and normally you'd say something like, uh, um, Adjust Fire, Shift from Known Point, Over. Um, and that way they know what type it is. But with the grid mission, it's, it's implied if you don't say it. Uh, Continuing, you would explain to them that they need to give the target location, just like we saw they would see in the uh, lecture slides that I'm going to be giving in the, in, during the LLAB. So grid November Kilo, 180513 over. Grid November Kilo, 180513 out. Uh, ask them to say it correctly, of course. Explain to them that this is the grid that they're giving to the fire direction center of the target that you see on the ground that you have calculated. Next, uh, you, you need to have described them. They need to give the target description. They need to describe what they see on the ground. So in this case, uh, with the full example adjust fire grid mission, infantry platoon in the open over. So that is a they see an infantry platoon. They see that it is in the open. It's in a field over, and then out. Uh, so next, you describe to them the message to the observer. Say to them, uh, I'll just read it first, then we'll talk about it. Aries, one round and adjust. Target Alpha Bravo, one, two, tree four, over. Aries, one round and adjust. Tar target Alpha Bravo, one, two, tree four, out. Uh, so explain to them each piece of this, because this is key. The first part, Aries, um, that is the battery that is sending the fire, the indirect fire. In this case, it happens to be the same as the fire direction center. In a lot of cases, it won't be. It'll be a different battery. It'll, it'll say something like, uh, Foxtrot, one round and adjust, whatever. Um, in this case, it's the same as the fire direction center. So Aries, one round and adjust. That is the uh, how much rounds that this battery is sending to you, uh, to your target. And in line with the type of mission that you requested, in this case, adjust fire. So one round and adjust. So they recognize that they're going, you are going to be making adjustments. And then they give you the target for that. Target Alpha Bravo, one, two, three, four. In this case, um, actually, in all, in all these cases, um, we realize that with this practical exercise that we are going to be doing, the target is not, or the the uh, target is going to be associated with the first round, and that first round is not going to hit right on the target. Uh, we know that um, the fire direction center realizes that, and as you make adjustments, they're going to move that target with it, so that when you finally do call for fire for effect. Um, that target will then be uh, set in stone and say, and okay, so now we know that the target um, 
is right on to where it is that you desire to hit because you've been making adjustments and finally you said fire for effect. Uh, so explain to that to them. Explain to them uh, that then that target once it's on well, that target that they give you uh, Alpha Bravo 1, 2, 3, 4 that once it actually hits your target on the ground you can later use that. Uh, you can call that up. You can call the fire direction center for uh, some other mission that you give and say uh, that you request target Alpha Bravo 1, 2, 3, 4 and they will know exactly where that is already because that is a target that uh, they have put on the ground. Or you can use that for a shift from a point or or any other sort of uh, mission where you, you have a known point on the ground. This is now a known point once you once you use it in that sense. So explain to them why they're giving that target at the beginning and, and, and how it's going to relate to the target on the ground even if it doesn't hit um, exactly where you want it to initially. Explain that to them. Uh, so then you continue. Shot over, shot out, splash over, splash out. So explain each part of this. Shot over and shot out, that is where the round is initially, the first round is his left the uh, his left the can. First round is left, so you need it's a sort of a warning towards that. Splash over, splash out, that is that five second warning before it hits the ground uh, near your target. That is your cue is the PL to pull up your binoculars and look out in the distance and uh, see where it hits basically. Uh, so explain that to them. Next, direction 1680, left 100 over. Direction 1680, left 100 out. This is a perfect time to pause. This is where you would explain to them the first calculations. Um, so explain to them what that direction is. That direction is the direction from the observer to the target. And that is just for the fire direction center's reference. So that they have an idea of where you are and the orientation of where you are on a straight line distance towards uh, the target that you see on the ground. And they're going to use that information to help make their adjustments and their math uh, and do their mathematics. Um, so the left 100, you need to explain that to them. This is the part where you'll explain to them how to make uh, define the deviation correction. Uh, so remember that, uh, remind them that the calculations for that is observer deviation times the OT factor equals the deviation correction. Explain to them each piece of that. Um, for the practical exercises, as well as this full example of Justify Our Grid Mission, I've given uh, the observer deviation and the observer target distance, by which you would use to figure out um, the deviation correction. In real life, you wouldn't have that. You would have to calculate it yourself. But explain to them, still, how it is that they will calculate each of those things. So for the observer de deviation, real, tell them that they would pull out their compass. They would point it at the uh, where the first round hit find the mills direction towards that, find the mills direction towards the target, uh, find the angular difference, it's a simple subtraction problem, and uh, that gives them, in this case, for the the example, 50 mills. Um, then they would, they would find the observer target distance, explain to them that uh, some of the ways that they would find that is uh, they have like a, a laser tool that they use, I forget what it's called, unfortunately, but um, they can point that down and give them a, a pretty accurate reading as to how far away the target is. Also, they could judge, they could, uh, if they have experience with it, they can just use their own site to sort of judge that distance. Um, in this case, it's given 1,700 meters. So explain to them how they figure out the OT factor. Um, you just round it up, correct, right? So 1,700 meters, we'd round up to two, uh, or excuse me, 2,000. And because it's a one to 1,000 ratio in order to figure out the OT factor, that 2,000 is two. So your OT factor is two. Um, so now to figure out the deviation correction, you have your observer deviation of 50 mils and your OT factor of 2 times those together. 50 times 2 is 100. So your first uh, correction is 100. Now at this point you would want to refer back to the back of the documents that I gave you. And you'll see I made a little, um, little image here to help you use. Uh, it is, it's hard to tell from this orientation because it's backwards, but um. In this case, uh, it's to the left of the, or excuse me, it's to the right of the target. So you want to move it right, or excuse me, you want to move it left 100. You want to move it left 100. I'll say that again so I don't confuse you. Um, in order to get it on the observer target line, that is your first adjustment. So under, help them understand the need to get it on the observer target line so that they can then bracket back and forth and they don't have to worry about it. Uh, it's left or right. Uh, 
sort of distance from the target. They know it's on that line. So continuing, uh, they've stated the direction in the, in the first adjustment, shot over, shot out, splash over, splash out, look at your binoculars, see where it hit. Okay, now we see that it is hit behind the target. Um, as you look at the image, you can see it's, it's slightly above, so it would hit back here, and now they're going to bracket it, correct, as we've talked about. Explain to them why it is um, that they want to bracket. You're bracketing so that you can get a picture of sort of a visual image of the distance between the rounds and the target itself. And, and by surrounding it, you have a better idea of what that looks like. Um, and with each bracket adjustment, you are getting closer and closer to the target. So explain that to them. Um, so the first one is drop 400 over. Explain to them that sometimes if it's an even larger distance that they judge, it could be 800. Um, but it'll, be, it'll normally be either 400 or 800, like um, these uh, big even number adjustments that they can then break down. So drop 400 over, drop 400 out is the fire direction center. Shot over, shot out, splash over, splash out. They look up with their uh, binoculars on splash. They see that now it is hit below, or excuse me, uh, it is hit closer to the observer and, and the target is now behind that next shot. So now they need to add again. So explain that to them. Add 200 now. So you're just having those amounts. 400, 200 uh, is next. So add 200 over, add 200 out. Shot over, shot out, splash over, splash out. Next, uh, you see that it's behind it again, so you want to have it again. So 100 this time, 200 to 100. Drop 100 over, drop 100 out. Uh, shot over, shot out, splash over, splash out. And now you are able to make the last adjustment, excuse me, adjustment of 50 and tell them, explain to them that once it is within 50 meters of the target, that is the effective radius, blast radius of indirect fire uh, rounds normally. So once it's within 50 uh, meters of the target, they know that it's going to be a killing blow. Um, so for this case, uh, add 50 would be next, and then explain to them why you would say the next thing, which is fire for effect over. The fire for effect is basically letting them, the fire direction center know that uh, the next round is that's going to hit is going to actually hit the enemy and it's going to be a it's going to be deadly for them. Uh, and so they're going to send uh, the full amount of um, ammo that they were willing to give to you in that mission uh, in order to effectually uh, destroy the enemy at that point. So add 50 fire for effect over. Add 50 fire for effect out. Shot over, shot out, splash over, splash out. Look at binoculars. Now you give them the end of mission. Explain to them, excuse me, explain to them why you give that. And that is so that they can, the fire direction center has an idea of the damage that was done. Um, so you say end of mission, 15 casualties, platoon dispersed over, end of mission, 15 casualties, platoon dispersed out. 15 casualties is just, you knew it was a platoon and you see that there's 15 dead, so you're giving them an amount. And then you're also giving them a description of what's occurring. Uh, in this case, platoon dispersed. Obviously, whenever we get hit by indirect fire in our lanes, uh, we start dispersing. We start we move away from that area. Um, so that's an explanation of what is going on in this scenario for the fire direction center. Uh, and that's the end of your class, basically. Uh, so the key things that I'm trying to get at here is go at it very slowly, go step by step, explain each individual piece, Make sure they understand why it is that you do each individual thing and explain to them uh, at the key points the mathematics as you go through it. So uh, that way they, they understand not just how to do the math, but the practical application of that math. So that um, once they get to that point in the transmission, they'll know where they need to pause and start doing those calculations. Um, so sort of, sort of explain that to them. Uh, the next video that I'm giving uh, will be sort of going through the practical exercise and what that looks like. Thank you.